and welcome to Tea and Strumpets. I'm Kelsey. For today's On D, we're going to do something that I'm hoping to incorporate a bit more in the future. As mentioned, you know, Zoe and I read a lot of other books, not just historical romance. And sometimes we read a book and we just want to tell you it was part of the concept of this on D was like it was a place to share books or media or other things that we're just thoroughly enjoying that we just think you guys might be interested in as well. So for today, I'm starting a new on D, which I'm hoping to do more in the future. And in this case, it is a contemporary review. So I'm going to review a book. It will not be the same reviews that we do in our full length episodes. This will be a more condensed review. I'm not going to do a detailed synopsis. I'm going to read you the back of the book, and then I'm going to give you my review of it. Today, we have episode one of Contemporary Reviews. I shouldn't call this an episode because otherwise it's an episode in an episode, but say lovey. Anywho, uh, I'm going to talk about The Plus One by Maisie Eddings. Now, Maisie has been featured on our podcast a couple times before. We did a Tessa Dare novella review with her, and we talked about her love of um, virgin heroes and... Uh, only one bed tropes, uh, which are great tropes. Um, but we also, uh, featured her in our first season of Bridgerton recap. She talked about one of the episodes with us and it was so much fun to have her back then. Talked about her love of Anthony. And even though we weren't talking about Anthony yet because it was Daphne and the Duke's book, we're like, Anthony, 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 as many of us were. So Maisie was not yet an author when we spoke to her. Uh, She has since published three books. Uh, This is her most recent book, and I just have things to say about it. So here we go. This is the plus one. Some facts are indisputable. The sun rises in the east and sets in the west. Gravity exists. Indira doesn't like Jude. Jude doesn't like Indira. But what happens when these childhood enemies find the only thing they can rely on is each other? On paper, Indira has everything together. An amazing job, a boyfriend, and a car. What more could a late 20-something ask for? But when she walks in on her boyfriend in an amorous embrace with a stranger, that perfect on-paper image goes up in flames. Jude has nothing together. A doctor who spent the last three years traveling the world to treat emergencies and humanitarian crises, Jude struggles to adjust during a quick trip home for his best friend's wedding. Thrust into an elaborate and ridiculously drawn-out wedding event that's stressing Jude beyond belief and has Indira seeing her ex and his new girlfriend far more frequently than any human should endure, the duo strike a bargain to be each other's fake dates to this wedding from hell. The only problem is their forced proximity and fake displays of affection are starting to feel a bit… real. And both are left grappling with the idea that a situation that couldn't be worse is made a little better with the other around. Okay, so first trope we have is an enemies to lovers trope, which, if you don't know already, is my favorite trope. And it's probably why this is actually the first book of Maisie's that I've chosen to read. Sorry, Maisie, I have your other two books. I just have not yet read them. I also have like six other books that recently dropped in my Kindle and I'm like, ah, when will I find the time? Anywho, so no secret, enemies to lovers, am into it. Uh, there is a strong trigger warning at the beginning of this. I will read you the content warnings just so that way you are fully aware for my review. And also, if you decide to pick up this book, you are just fully aware. Hello, my dearest reader. While this book is a romance with a very happy ending and some laughs along the way, it also addresses heavier topics. Please be aware that the following are discussed through the novel. PTSD from losing patients as a medical provider in emergency situations, emotional repercussions of growing up with divorced parents, moving on after a past partner cheats. Also of note, the global healthcare organization mentioned throughout the book is fictional, created from various elements of existing systems and organizations, and is not representative out of any singular group. Please take care of yourself as you read. I did my best to handle the above with nuance, respect, and compassion. All my love, Maisie. Now that everyone has their eyes wide open, we are going to give you my review of this. Um, I will say five stars just right off the bat. We're not even going to tease it till the end. It's a five-star book. I loved this. Jude and Indira are this hilarious combination of sarcasm and deadpanning. And as someone who has friends who excel at these things, I just found their repartee really hilarious to read. And they play off each other so well, even to the point where once they even are together, 
they still can't help themselves with these sarcastic retorts. And um, I love it. I think that part of it resonates with me is because like my husband and I, we really like each other. But our favorite phrase is you're being an asshole right now. Stop being an asshole. And we say it with love because the fact of the matter is like we like the fact that we're both snarky and call each other on our shit and don't, you know, think the other one farts rainbows. <laughs> um, we're very aware of our flaws and have worked towards, you know, putting them together in a very productive relationship. But I love it because their relationship is a little bit like the one I share with my husband. It's all about snark and sarcasm, even if directed towards the other one, it's done with love. But it's even better when you can like team up and be sassy you know, snarkily to each other in the corner as you're at a party and watching everybody else do party things. I really love that. Also, too, Jude suffering from the PTSD is it's real. Like it's hard. It's sometimes hard to read. You feel it. Um, I think that it's just very well done. I also love that it's very realistic in the sense of it's hard to even admit there is a problem. It's hard to admit how you're feeling because you just want to be normal. And it's so easy to just be like, if I keep pushing on, eventually this will go away. But it doesn't. Um, the decision to go to therapy is a really hard one. And I find that really interesting too, because for Indira, who is a psychiatrist, she even says to her own therapist, I don't want to be his psychiatrist. I want him to see me for me. And then at one point, Jude even says to her, I don't want you to be my psychiatrist, which is really great because that's not who she wants to be. She wants to push him to seek help, but also doesn't want him to feel that that's all the pressure and that she needs him to be a certain way. She accepts him for who he is and what he's going through and, in fact, thinks that that makes him even more special to her. Now, their relationship is one that I just love. They were friends as children. Well, I wouldn't say they were friends. He was best friends with her brother, which is why they are forced together in close proximity with each other um, leading up to her brother's wedding. But he was there. He saw the things that have made her who she is. He saw their father leave. He saw the aftermath of the family dealing with the loss of her dad, as in he walked out on them. He saw the pressures it put on both her and her brother and how it changed them. So he was there for all that. And part of the relationship, too, and the bonding that really has them grow closer as adults is reminiscing on the silliness of being kids and the snarky things they did to each other, but also the sweet moments where they were there for each other. It was just such a beautiful thing because, yes, it felt sometimes like they were circling each other a lot, but it really um, it needed to be that way. It couldn't have been any different. I laughed. I actually cried. And I also thanked God that I had dealt with my own trauma of divorced parents and dealing with, you know, a bad relationship with my father. If I had read that book before doing all this, I think it would have hit a little bit differently. But I have been actively doing work, you know, doing my own work on myself and figuring out how that trauma of that relationship with my father has affected who I was as an adult and how that has played into my relationships and how I need to be aware of that in my interactions within my own relationship because it does color a lot of the things I do and how I approach situations. I also just thought it was beautifully written. Like there were some lines, I'm sorry, I have no quotes because I read this in bed from 8 p.m. to 1.30 a.m. And I did not have a pen or a highlighter near me to like highlight or mark anything down, which is a shame because there were some really beautiful lines in it. And maybe one day I'll go back and reread it and can highlight and annotate. But that's not how I like to enjoy my first reads. I want to be absorbed in the story and do that. So Sorry, unfortunately, I didn't on my Kindle, I can highlight as I go, but I bought the paper copy of this because I'm going to see Maisie at the Festival of Books, which will have been the weekend before this airs. So I need her to sign this book for me. <laughs> She's doing a book signing. So I will be there to have a book signed. Anyway, five star review. 
can't say enough good things about this book. I highly recommend it. The other books in the series have other things. This one was PTSD. The first one is dealing with anxiety. And then the second one deals with an ADHD diagnosis. And if those are triggering for you and you couldn't get through them, then maybe this one you can get through. Um, I think these are just really poignant real life stories. I think what I loved about it too was it just felt very real and very real life. It did not feel contrived. It really felt like something that could happen. And I think in the contemporaries, I like a rom-com nature, but I also like a little believability in my contemporaries. So thank you, Maisie, for that beautiful book. And I hope that this inspires someone to pick it up. So join us for our next week, which is a full-length episode. And may all your ever-afters end happily. Happily.